I'm Yaffe Lavova, Registered Dietitian Nutritionist with Baby Bloom Nutrition, and welcome to Nap Time Nutrition. Running a little bit late and filming in my crazy office because I'm having some serious tech issues. Guess I can take off the glasses. So let's talk about PMS. Do you get PMS? I do, right now. Um, what what do you do about it? What are your cravings? Post your cravings in the comments section. I want to hear what you are craving. I crave ice cream, usually. <laughs> um, and what do you do for self-care? I just went and had a massage and that was fun, but that's not exactly something normal for me. So what do you do? Um, yeah, also I should make a disclaimer that I am a healthcare professional. So if your form of self-care is killing your husband, don't tell me. Um, that's not a good thing for me to know about you. So yeah, don't do that. 85% um, of women experience some form of PMS, and women will experience it in a little bit different ways. Some get depressed, some get bloated, you know, people have different, um, different symptoms. 10% of women have PMDD, which is premenstrual diphoric disorder, which is basically premenstrual psychosis, when it really just goes beyond where, where it normally should. So um, yeah, give me, give me a thumbs up if you have PMDD. So why does this happen? Well, there are hormonal flows that happen, hormonal fluctuations that happen throughout the month. But what happens in the week or two before you get your period is you're getting this, this estrogen progesterone imbalance and it really wreaks havoc on your neurotransmitters. And the neurotransmitters are your happy signals. They're the signals that go from your brain to tell you to be happy. Um, some of that is serotonin, which is 85% produced in the intestines and tells your brain to be happy. And this really goes crazy during this time when your estrogen and progesterone are um, going a little bit off course. So um, a lot of times diet is blamed as far as um, alcohol, sugar, and salt. And I'll get into more specifics with that. It's more complicated. Often we crave carbohydrates. I just had a big bowl of pasta. What do you like? What do you crave when you have PMS? So it's normal to crave carbohydrates, a lot of women do, because they provide tryptophan in your body. And um, tryptophan is a precursor to serotonin. Most people know tryptophan as the, the stuff that you get from turkey, Thanksgiving dinner. And it's interesting that other foods are actually higher in tryptophan, but a big bowl of pasta, for example, is going to cause increased tryptophan production, which increases serotonin, which makes you feel happy. So there's that. Um, and that's your body's attempt to increase your good mood. So uh, during this time, your progesterone drops and metabolites. So you have your progesterone. When it breaks down in your body, it becomes progesterone metabolites. And progesterone metabolites have a calming effect. So when there are fewer of them, you have less of that calming effect, which means, well, you hit the Ben and Jerry's. So, um, so what else is going on? You've got that balance of estrogen and progesterone, which, which could have to do with um, an abnormal serotonin neurotransmission, which means your serotonin production and uptake in your brain is all off, which means that you're not as calm and happy. Um, there could be genetic factors. People who have, women who have mothers who have experienced depression, anxiety, PMS, are more likely to experience those same um, problems. Also, your physical health and your psychological distress are going to factor in. So if you're at a particularly stressful time, your PMS will be worse because that makes sense. So, um, and also your physical health, you have to take care of yourself. If you're not in good shape, your body or your mind, you're going to feel these effects more than if you were in better shape. So good thing to keep track of. Also, certain vitamin and mineral deficiencies, and I'm definitely going to get into some specifics with that, but that's going to cause some increased PMS symptoms. And weight cycling. So often, uh, often there's research that shows that if you're at a higher weight, then you have more effects of PMS. But the truth is that it's not the weight alone, it's the weight cycling. And what does that mean? That's the yo-yo dieting. That's when you chase down weight loss and then you gain it back because diets fail. And then you chase down weight loss and then you gain it back because diets fail. And that's not you failing, that's the diet failing. And that's a whole other conversation for us to have because I'm a big fan of intuitive eating. But that weight cycling throws your neurotransmitters off because you store hormones in your fat 
and the whole system is just messed up when you when you gain and lose weight so much like that. So you might be you might take that and say, oh well, then this next diet is going to be really successful. No, it's not. It's not because it's not you. It's the diet. And like I said, another talk for another time. But that weight cycling. Um, so try to get peace with yourself. So how do you manage PMS? Um, yeah, if if you're using tranquilizer darts to manage your PMS. I don't really need to know about that. Dietary changes, uh, I mentioned sugar and alcohol and salt, and those each individually have are associated with different PMS symptoms and also caffeine. So sugar and caffeine are likely going to elevate any anxiety that you might be feeling. Alcohol is going to mess with your estrogen, project, pro, estrogen production, which means you're going to be a little bit more depressed and weepy. And I don't mean just when you're actually drinking, but in the day, few days after, it will exacerbate that symptom if that's something that you experience. So to take that back to the whole, um, like, you know, the, the I love you man joke, right? When you're drinking at the bar or when, you know, someone else is drinking at the bar and starts, you know, with the I love you man, that's because alcohol changes how your neurotransmitters are, um, are, are managed and received in your body. And so people it really messes with your estrogen. So people have higher estrogen when they're drinking, which means they are more likely to love people next to them, uh, either verbally or otherwise. So that's where that comes from. And that can impact your PMS symptoms if you find that you're particularly weepy. You wanna stay away from alcohol. Um, sodium is going to cause you to have some bloating. And so if you're already feeling some bloating and that's something that you really want to avoid, you might wanna cut down your sodium during this time. I am not suggesting that you you look at the calendar and say, oh, this is PMS. I'm not having any sugar or any alcohol or any caffeine or any sodium. That is not realistic. I'm saying that you should look at what your symptoms are and what might exacerbate it. If you have anxiety, maybe don't reach that extra cup of caffeine, coffee, tea, whatever. And by the way, black tea does have caffeine. So um, you want to have small frequent meals and you want to really um, be present in your meals. I did a nap time nutrition a couple weeks ago where I had Joy Carter do a food meditation and that's an exercise to help you be a little bit more mindful with your meals. If you are more mindful with your meals, you're less likely to overindulge, which means you're going to be more comfortable after the fact. And it means that you're going to enjoy what you're having more than if you weren't mindful. If you are downing that Ben and Jerry's pint while screaming at your kids, it's not as enjoyable as if you sit down when they're asleep or, you know, drink dart. Um, if you sit down and you enjoy that ice cream and you're mindful about it. So yeah, drink dart. Um, <laughs> exercise. There is no proof that exercise relieves symptoms of PMS, but we do have enough proof that it it stimulates productions of endorphins, which are little feel-good guys in your system that, that really do help with the, the neurotransmitter balance and help you feel good. So while there's no direct research on exercise benefiting symptoms of PMS, we can make that safe assumption that some happy movement, like for me, it's Zumba. And I did an halftime nutrition on that as well with Sarah Kupfer, who's a CrossFit trainer, on happy movement. So go check that out. But find your happy movement and do it because it's going to make you feel better to do something that's fun. Go take a walk outside. You know, for those of us in Arizona who are experiencing, what what was it, 85 yesterday? Come on, it's March. Anyway, um, therapy, either for those, for, for you or for those around you. I, I'm not judging here. Um, right, I have a note about Trank Dart. <laughs> I think that's the, <laughs> that's the theme of today, not PMS, tranquilizer dart. Okay, so so my husband went and got me the wrong ice cream. No, I'm just kidding. He got the right ice cream, all five of them. Um, so I did not have to drink him. But it's good to to know um, how your moods are affecting you and how they're affecting those around you. So keep that in mind. Uh, chased berry, something that I learned while doing this research that I had never heard of before. It's also called chased tree berry. And you can bet that it's in my Amazon shopping cart right now as we speak, and I should probably buy it so it's in the mail. But there has been conclusive evidence that the chased berry extract com that comes from Central Asia helps to increase progesterone. So during the time of PMS, if you are to increase progesterone, 
um, and the dosage that was studied was 20 milligrams, 50% your symptoms will go down. And it wasn't clear if, um, I'll need to read the study closer, if it was 50% of participants experienced a decrease in symptoms or if the participants experienced a 50% de decrease. Either way, I'm going for it, um, and I can't tell you to because that borders on medical advice, and you should never take medical advice from Facebook. Okay, let that one sink in. Never take medical advice from Facebook. If you want, at this point in my talk, I'm going to get into some specifics here on specific nutrition. You should run this by your doctor because this is very individual. I am not sitting here in my messy office giving you advice on your um on on th that you should be taking because i don't have your medical chart and i don't know your history um so paula says what's the supplement okay so i found it as chaste tree berry and i'm going to type that in um at paula okay that didn't work chaste tree berry and um i the, the research was 20 milligrams. The dosage that I found was 250 milligrams. So I do need to look more into that and you should discuss that with your doctor, but that is definitely going to be in my mouth soon. Um, something else is hormonal therapy. And that gets back to the PMS versus PMDD. Is this normal PMS you're experiencing or is this above and beyond and into PMDD range where you actually need some pharmaceutical intervention or see a naturopathic physician. If you're in the area, um, in, in the general Phoenix area, I have a great naturopathic physician I could send you. Uh, but you, you may benefit from some hormonal therapy or herbal remedies, what have you. Um, and that is definitely not in my scope of practice. And it's important when you're speaking to a healthcare practitioner that they know their scope of practice. This is not mine, so I'm not going to advise you on that. Okay, getting back to my scope of practice, the nutrition part. Um, calcium and vitamin D have been very closely linked to PMS symptoms. So they're related to estrogen. Um, estrogen helps you to absorb calcium, and calcium has a very best friend relationship with vitamin D. And I did a whole other nap time nutrition on vitamin D, and actually on calcium for that matter as well. Um, but you'll find that people who have anorexia or who exercise an excessive amount and don't have, they've disrupted their, their hormones, they're going to have less estrogen, which means they're going to have less absorption of calcium. And that causes a whole host of issues and they should definitely seek the appropriate treatment for that. But that's, um, it's an extreme example of how disruption in estrogen will cause a disruption in your calcium and your vitamin D uptake. So research has shown that if you supplement your calcium at 1,200 milligrams uh, per day during the time of PMS and 400 IU of vitamin D, that is going to be beneficial. Of course, that 500 IU of vitamin D is a very low dosage. That was based on women who started out at an appropriate baseline. And most of us are not an appropriate baseline, especially here in Arizona where we stay covered up. Um, and we stay inside during the sunny, well, it's always sunny. Um, we, stay, we stay inside during the very hot weather, so we don't get the benefit of that sunshine. So get your vitamin D tested. Go check out my Naptime Nutrition on vitamin D to hear more about your dosage and how you should find out what you should be taking. It is very personal. So vitamin, the B vitamins. B vitamins are a, a host of vitamins. It goes from B1 up to B12, and those are all just considered B complex. And likely that was named B vitamins before it was differentiated, uh, before we knew that those were all different types of nutrients. So um, B vitamins are needed for tryptophan, for SAMe, and for GABA. That all sounds like fun, right? Well, those, those, are, um, those are little guys who produce serotonin and dopamine. And those are the feel-good, happy neurotransmitters that make you feel good and calm and at peace with yourself and not wanting to trench dart everyone around you. So um, the, the best benefit was found when, vitamin, when the B complex vitamins were in food rather than in supplements. And there was actually one study that showed that taking a B complex could actually increase your PMS symptoms as opposed to 
the intended effect. So what you really want to do is have foods that are high in the B vitamins. And I did post earlier, you can check my newsfeed, I posted some nutrients that you really want to, some, some foods that contain these nutrients that you really want to concentrate on during this time. Um, and specifically riboflavin and thiamine. And these are fortified um, items. They are going to be found in fortified grains, such as breads and fortified pastas, fortified cereals. But those are more counted as supplements, not as food, because they are chemical forms that are put in your food to mimic those nutrients. And that's a whole other conversation. But you're really better getting it from its intended place. Your body can recognize it and you eat it and your body takes it up and does with it what it's supposed to. And just time and time again, we're, we've shown that a lot of supplements are not as efficient. Not to say you shouldn't take your multivitamin or your prenatal. You definitely should. It's just not the same as having it in your food. So that's supposed to be the backup. Um, Non-heme iron. And this is very interesting because we are always, um, we're always to told to push iron, especially for women who are pregnant, because a lot of women will have iron deficiency anemia when they're pregnant and also after pregnancy or in general for that matter. And we're told that heme iron is best absorbed and will have a, the best effect on, uh, on, on reducing the symptoms of that and getting your blood levels back to where they should be. For PMS reasons specifically, you should focus on non-heme iron. So what does that mean? Heme iron comes from animal sources non-heme iron comes from non-animal sources. So that brings us back to our leafy greens. You're going to have um, broccoli, spinach, uh, kale, all of these are going to be high in non-heme iron. And that's really what you wanna have during this time. So make sure to put a pile of steamed spinach on top of your chunky monkey. That's rule of thumb. Um, so magnesium, as magnesium oxide was shown at 200 milligrams per day and check with your doctor on that, that it decreases PMS symptoms. The thing that you really want to watch out for with magnesium is that if you have any kind of heart condition or if you're on certain medications, you are not taking supplemental magnesium. You're not. Okay, you can get safe magnesium from Epsom salt baths. So if you're on a, on a medication or you are... Um, you have other, other issues why you wouldn't want to be taking magnesium that your doctor tells you, double check but you should be able to take Epsom salt baths and be able to absorb an appropriate amount of magnesium for your system through your skin in that bath. So that's something that you should talk to your doctor about. Talk to your doctor about it. Magnesium is a really big uh, thing that you want to you wanna watch out for. If you take too much and you are otherwise healthy, you will end up in the bathroom all night. So even with that alone, watch out for <laughs> what you need. Everyone's body is individual and you really have to watch for what you need and what your symptoms are and treat them appropriately. And any specific supplements that I've mentioned should be run through your doctor. Did I say that? I should say that again for like the 12th time. Okay. Through your doctor. I am not dispensing medical advice on Facebook. So thank you for joining Naptime Nutrition uh, and this conversation on PMS. I still want to see what you people crave and what your symptoms are. So post that in the comment box, share with anyone who you think needs to see this. And if you are a man watching this and you think that a female needs to see this, share this with one of her friends to share with her. I do not recommend sharing this from male to female directly because of aforementioned trink dart. Make yourself a target. Okay, so if you are local to the Phoenix area, come join me at Toddler Test Kitchen. Um, we just hit our two year anniversary and it's super fun. We recently made um, avocado grapefruit salsa with homemade tortilla chips and it was really tasty. So come join me for one of those. And as always, I am here on Naptime Nutrition, 1 p.m. Arizona time and we don't change the clocks. So I'm here anyway. Now we're at the same time as, as uh, the West Coast. Like me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, and send me love. See you next week.